Hey guys, it's Stephanie Grams with Stowing with Steam LLC. Today I am going to talk about starting your own memory bear sewing service business. Uh, fast for or rewind for a second. I've been sewing for over 30 years, both hand sewing and machine show sewing. I have also been a pattern designer for over over 20 years. So Let's move on. If you already know your way around the sewing machine and can read a pattern, then perhaps the next step would be for you to offer memory bear sewing services. There are a few things that you need to keep in mind if this is what you're going to do. All right. And this is not in any order. This is not of, you know, importance number one or two or anything like that. This is strictly what I've learned over the years of offering these services. All right. I would probably contact your local score office or small business association to find out what the laws are in your state, city, and county. Each area has their own set of laws as far as running or owning a business. So I would start there. Now, I am not giving you legal advice. I'm not giving you accounting advice. I'm just strictly speaking from the point of view of being a memory bear sewing service provider, all right? Some things that you will need will be your own website, a domain name, preferably one that is named after your business. For example, my business is Sewing with Steam LLC. My website is sewingwithsteamllc.com. I have used that business name for my Facebook page, Instagram page, Pinterest page, and I'm trying to get it um, set for my YouTube channel. Now they're, they have their own little rules on when you can name your channel. But for now, that I'm trying to keep my business name all across my profiles. I personally formed an LLC to keep my personal life and finances separate from the business. Again, for more details on that, you need to contact legal advice in your county, which I already gave you two free organizations that will share that will help you with that. And that's SBA, Small Business Association, and SCORE. All right, so we already discussed you'll need a business name. It's preferable that you buy a domain name with the same name as your business, okay? And that you have a designated sewing area away from children, pets, and pungent food odors. <laughs> and uh, I should probably not even have to say this, but just in case you will want it away um, from any type of smoke, um, your customers are not going to want a stinky memory bear, uh, you know, that has, that has an odor is what I'm trying to say. So your sewing area probably preferably should be away from your kitchen, away from children, away from your pets. And um, sorry, I just keep it real. <laughs> so I move a lot because I talk. When I talk, I move. It's just something I do. So sorry. Um, anyways, you'll want to learn about taxes. All right. Again, I can't give you that information. I'm just giving you a checklist of things that you need to find out, um, questions that you can ask SBA or SCORE, all right? And I, no, I'm not affiliated with any of them. I'm just giving you some advice. All right, web hosting. Now, I have a web host and I am affiliated. I do have an affiliate link with them, which I am going to put in the description below this video. I will also put my affiliate link to the domain name purchaser that I use for my business. Those two links, if you decide to 
purchase your domain name or web hosting, they'll give me a little bit of a commission and that helps me give you more um, free business advice on this channel. All right, so we talked about a business name. We talked about who to contact for legal structures and taxes. We talked about needing a web host and um, website, right? All right, now we talked about where to construct your memory bear and we talked about keeping your workspace strictly your workspace. You'll want to keep it, like I said, away from animals, away from children, away from maybe the kitchen area of your house. Just, you know, like my work area, I have an extremely large bedroom now. So now I can work in my bedroom and it does not have any interruptions. Nothing's going to be touched in my workspace. When my children were younger, my workspace um, was a room outside the dining area and I shut the door and I said, when the store is shut, you stay out. You're, you know, they knew they could not come in and out. So if you have small children, it is doable. It's just, it might take a little bit of um, creative thinking on your part. At one point in over the years, I used one of my closets as my sewing area. And I had an extension cord leading out of my closet through my bedroom. And I kept my bedroom door shut because I told my kids, I'm in here working. Um, you need to stay out if you need me. Text me. And that's when I would get up from my sewing area. And I would walk out of my room to find out what they needed. So use technology, okay? <laughs> and let's see. Finances. Write down, don't just try to keep it mentally, but write it down, write it on a tablet, write it on the notepad, on your phone, write down the expenses that you're going to incur, okay? If you get a business license, write that down. If you buy a domain name, write that down. Web hosting, write that down. If you use Etsy, all of this information, write it down because you're going to see how quickly your expenses are going to add up. And that might, pay, might play a role in how much you're going to charge for your services. You also want to keep in mind competition. Does anybody in your town offer this service? If so, who, they, who, who are they and what are they charging? Look at the quality of their work. If this is something brand new and you don't, you have never made a memory bear, I want you to stop and think for just one minute before you start making purchases. Make sure this is something that you really want to do because they are, these memory bears are labor intensive. You don't know what type of clothing you're really going to get in your hands. Your customer might send you pictures, right? And, and show you pictures of the clothing that they want. But until you physically touch the fabric, you're not going to know what condition these pieces of clothing are in. So, if you've never made a memory bear, I recommend you to do this. Yes, go ahead and write down the expenses. Write down questions for legal counsel and things like that. But I, I recommend you either go through your closet and pull out clothes that your family no longer wears and make your own memory bear or go to the thrift store and purchase some clothing there and make a memory bear from start to finish. Time yourself. See how long it takes you. Learn the steps. You know, the best teacher is making a mistake. All right, so don't be afraid to make a mistake in constructing this memory bear, by all means, start with something that you're gonna keep or give as a gift, and that way you don't disappoint a customer. Now, if you've constructed a memory bear and you're thinking, yeah, I really wanna make a business out of this, what do I need to do? Okay, so you're gonna rewind this video a few seconds and you're gonna to listen to those tips. 
And then you're going to say, well, you know what? I, I know how to make a memory bear. I'm already doing that. Now I want to make a business out of it. Okay. So you're going to take all of my suggestions from the beginning of this video and you're going to move forward. You're going to design a website. If you need help designing that, then you're going to want to um, go to my memory bear business coaching page and sign up for those lessons. Um, if you already have a website and now you want to go bigger into the company and you really want to make money, then I will teach you how to do some marketing and uh, publicity as far as building your business. There's um, a lot of work that goes into this and you have to have all of your systems in place. You need to have legal structure within the state, city, and county that you live in. You need to know the tax rules. You need a domain name and a website and a way they can pay you. You need a way to invoice. You need a way to communicate back and forth besides just your phone, all right? This, this phone plays a huge role in moving your business forward. I will teach you those. But it also requires the ability to get on camera like I am and show that you're a real person in an area that's clean and that you're going to take good care of these treasured fabrics. So I will walk you through each area of building your business. I am here for questions. Please reach me through the contact page on my website. That is the only way I can be guaranteed that I'm going to see your question. Please do not rely on instant message, direct message, or even texting my business line for me to get your message because there are filters I have no control over whether or not I get your message or not. And I have had customers who finally went through my contact page on my website and asked me why I didn't respond through a private message. And my response was, <coughs> my response was, I never received it. And I apologize for that. But there's nothing I can do with a third party interference. And that's what social media is. It's a third party interference. Um, so definitely reach me through my contact page on my website. Again, I'm Stephanie Grams, owner of Sewing with Steam LLC. Dot com. I hope you reach out to me. Have a great day.